This is the November 3rd, 2022 meeting of the Hadley Climate Change Committee. And good evening. Um, we'll start today talking about green communities and the energy review. Why is that just focused on and me? It's not just you. It's everybody. Um, and we're really pleased to have Carolyn here just to share some more information about this and some other questions that we have. Do you want to start with some of your questions, or should we go to the... Do green communities okay. first. So let's, let's do green yeah. communities. We are almost done. We're on number four of five criterias, uh, criterion, and uh, we just need to get some things organized about utility costs, especially with some of the town buildings. So we're wondering what's the best way to pull that together. We started getting some of the numbers, but some of the numbers were they're so crazy. They're, they're questionable so i think the, the numbers that were questionable were, the, were those the ones that uh somebody uh, another person gathered i think you know, i feel like i should sit next to you and let you look at what we got these well, crazy i think what we really need to do is um i think it would be beneficial to let me see exactly like I would see bits and pieces come and go and my brain doesn't actually my brain that's what it does normally so it's better to keep it all focused yeah. if I can really see what exactly you need and it, who really can help with some of that is is the accountant of course I, I, yeah I, like I look at this okay there's for electricity use <laughs> this is crazy for 2000 uh, 22 it, it's this gigantic number for the elementary school and nothing for the high yeah, school. Yeah, so that was that that's definitely a billing issue. You know, yeah. and then I mean I'll just show you. Yeah. It's and, like and the other all thing, these blanks, you know, yeah. it, this is the most I mean we can't we can't no. use this No. We need I this is this is why we why we have an accounting company to help okay. us with that. Because yeah. I just had to ask her because we're you know we're part of the aggregate electricity program and we need to um, get some really updated straight, numbers. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I just asked the accountant to give us. I just needed one month both sides of um, electric bill mm -hmm. with making sure all the usage was on it. Um, now at that point there we may need to to look at is. Is there billing that's going to one school for all the schools? I don't think so, but she will absolutely be the person. Well, that to. that's my question. Is isn't there? I mean, it doesn't make sense for there to be accounts, uh, multiple buildings on one account. Doesn't each building have its own meter? So I would have to look at that. I mean, there's, it's it's part of me. The past two and a half years, I can't believe it's been two and a half years, but a lot of it has been looking at how things are getting categorized and billed and looking at one, do we want it all in separate uh, accounts? Something like uh, energy and utilities, I would say no, but there's other things that I'm combining accounts just to make it more efficient and easier to analyze. Right, but I think in this for case, energy use, we, yeah. it's so important for us to be looking at that. Absolutely. They're, they're definitely... Even if we have to dig a little deeper on the bills, yeah. then we can we'll find a way for, to do for that. every building because it's all like if that's wrong, then why would we think? In fact, for highway and water, Hopkins, North Hadley Town Hall, which we don't use, public safety, senior center, town hall, generator tanks, uh, all the there's no electricity usage. Yeah, and I think I'm pretty, it's on the bills. So I just think wherever that came from, it didn't, it wasn't inclusive. Right, but this is what went to our green communities. Yeah, so I, I can't, I, I don't know where that came from, so I don't know. So she wouldn't do it. So, so who is the person? the accurate information. Yeah. Who is the person we need to talk to, or will you help us? I'll help you, yeah. Okay. I think you guys just need one person to be, to be that you know, go through, so I don't mind doing okay. that. Yeah, so Jacinta Williams with PVPC, she actually started creating the draft of our plan. We have four of the five criteria that we've already addressed. Right. So the centerpiece to this plan is this energy reduction plan, and that's what she was working on. So she has everything roughed out, but the numbers just are really shaky and seem well, unbelievable. Right. Part of it is we need to commit to trying to reduce the, the, the energy use mm -hmm. at the town buildings. 
So we're hoping that if we have accurate numbers, we can do it. So there's a second part to this question. Do you happen to remember if in the last couple of weeks a fellow named Rich Finn called you? So so here's the thing. It yeah. could have gotten screened out. And here's, here's the thing. I presently don't have, again, IT. I've been waiting for my phone. Since I moved offices, I moved across the hall. Yeah. My phone has not been hooked up to my desk. So in the last couple of weeks, I would assume it would have gotten left um, in Jennifer's box, but I, we can double check. What's his name again? So I think his name is Rich Finn, F-I-N-N. -N. And where's he from? Um, he's, <coughs> he's somebody who works with Eversource. He doesn't work for Eversource, yep. but he's a consultant. Energy Source, I think, is the name of his company, and he could come around and he can actually do the energy audit on all the different older town buildings to come up with a plan. Okay. Because again, so this is the different. centerpiece. Well, this is interesting. You know, we had one like my first month when I was here. An energy audit? Mm hmm. Do you know who did it? Do yeah, it was through Eversource. There, and then there's that other company that sounds like Eversource. Was it Matt McTeague? By any Definitely chance? did one with Matt McTeague. Mm -hmm. But I think there's been two since I've mm -hmm. been here, which has been confusing to me. Do you have the paperwork on that? Gary Berg would have it. And let me check on that. The discouraging thing is, is that. I think the general response that when um, he reported back to Gary, he did not report back to me directly, was that there wasn't a lot that could be done. But it That's could what we keep hearing, but I want the detail on that. There's not a lot that can be done because stuff's already been done or it's the wrong kind of building. It'd be good to know what like, what the actual status is and yeah. then mm -hmm. you know, we can go with that to people who know really how to improve energy efficiency. So what we need to do is commit to trying to reduce town energy building use. I think the target is 20%. That's aspirational. You don't have to hit that. But we want to aim right. toward that. Um, and even though there might be this perception that there's not much to improve, maybe between all the older buildings in town, that there's ways that we can... Well, it's certainly the, windows. I, I don't know if you've been in an office at the town hall. But um, they're either sealed shut, yeah. or or they're just banging. Um, oh and I gosh. think that was brought up at the energy audit, yeah. and they and they said, well, we know that that's a cost that you can, that's going to. They be. don't do. Unfortunately, Mass Save doesn't do windows. They don't do windows, and um, it's, uh, CP. I, I'm trying to see because obviously the town hall also needs to be painted. It, it's just. Yeah. So I really want to try to see how it could fit in, but my understanding is CPA does not. Um, repair so for no example, replace they only repair yeah. but what? so if we knew you know which are the most leaky buildings then you know some of the money that comes in through becoming a green community could be used toward mm -hmm. the repair and replacement Amazing. of those of yes. those um, windows right well and there yeah. are other grants out there too I mean and more money's well, becoming that's, available yeah, that's, a, that's a bigger question I think you know there, there's so many grants coming out of the federal government right now and the question is, how can Hadley really set itself up to be able to apply for them? Yeah. It's super competitive, and it's just, you yeah. know, you and need someone who has the capacity to And I'll explain to some it. of the involvement that I have with a couple engineers that we've done with MVP, the mm -hmm. dike, and some of the challenges that Hadley has in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's our next topic we want to bring up. Yeah, but we want to make sure, uh, so we have until March. We have about five months left. Okay. Um, so every six months there's a new deadline on the green communities. And again, we're close. It's just this one Which is, big is item, the piece. energy reduction plan that really is the centerpiece. Um, that's the one that we have to work on. Of how can we reduce energy costs in town? And we can kind of get creative too. I don't know if the new lights that are coming in will apply. Those will be energy. I would think so. Yeah, they'd be that very we, energy yeah, efficient. Yeah, we're going to save a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. I mean, DOE grants are out there, um, and through the um, Inflation Reduction Act and the um, Infrastructure and Investment Jobs Act, whatever, there is tons of money coming available. So if you know, we could do assessment that doesn't stop it, oh, you can't afford it, but says, no, you could do these things, it would cost you this much, then we have a basis to on which to go for these mm -hmm. grants, right? Yeah, so. and, and yeah, and, and I will, again, that, you know, 
it gets a little frustrating sitting here because I, you, I, I'm told that a lot, and then when I get into the, the guts of the thing, well, like, so for an example, there's, you know, uh, all of our ditches and our culverts. Our culverts are in very, very poor condition right. in our bridges in Hadley. Probably too small. So there's two things. Rain. There's what is the, one of the most discouraging things happens was my first month here. So I'm working with an engineer um, from, um, I work with a couple different engineers, one on the dike, with, and I'll explain that because I know you want to hear about that. We're in our second phase of that assessment. But also with um, the municipal vulnerability, yeah. um, I am working with Dave Roman from CEI. And so he's, he's the one who got us through, and I have copies. And I don't know if you guys have seen these. I brought a few copies. Again, I had gremlins in my, uh, um, in my office today. But I have copies of, if you guys we're aware of the, the, the workshop that they actually did when those money We just got a copy of over. that. Assessment. Okay, so that you were able to open that. <laughs> yeah, just to... I, I had it separately from... Okay. From so, one of the things Yeah, we that didn't get it from you. This is, okay. this, is, this is kind of the challenges that we face. And I actually called Dave yesterday. He's on paternity leave, so while the baby was sleeping, we got to talk a little bit. <laughs> and, I, you know, and, we, and we kind of walked through where, where are we at, and he just, you know, we walked through what we've been doing since I got here. And of course, I'm looking for my cheat sheets and can't find them. But um, the um, hold on. Is the one that we received online that you couldn't open? No, mm -hmm. those are. I don't. I'm not really sure about those. I, I shared it. I think with the committee before yeah, the. It's the MVP yeah. assessment yeah. that was done. It's yeah. this. So when we th there were things that were identified. So there was a grant that we that CEI applied for us last year. Um, for one, some, some culvert repair. And here was the, here, when we did the debriefing, when we got denied, um, the, one of the, one of the um, problems were is the repair needed to be nature-based. It needed to be a mm. natural solution. And the culverts that we're focusing on are going to need cement. They're going to need something that doesn't fit that. And that's what we were applying for was those specific culverts. But we got denied for that. Another example is there was a, a federal grant that came in. I think last week I found out about it, and it went, you know, I was on another workshop, and they said, you know, go for this. And I click on, but its its major focus federally was to a increase access to the to for fishery. Right. We don't have fishes in our farm ditches. That's we don't have that. So most of our streams don't have fish going through it. So, so we get knocked out of things like that. So it, what about, I, I went to the workshop last year about, um, what's it called? It's state grants, it's set up so you can put in one application and it will just yep. automatically go to every yep. grant that you qualify for. Yes, yep. And I, I remember reading about Yeah, like so this. I've done that mass works when we were trying to get reimbursed for the work that they're doing right now with the widening project and where they're replacing all of our pipes and our uh, sewer pipes and doing that work for us. And we had we took it to town meeting, but um, we did not get that grant. And because it's a very, it's like a ch you have to check in. You have to check a list, check a criteria and then you have to find something that fits the project. And what was happening was the, the focus of that Mass Works grant, which is what we were eligible for for that type of work, had to be providing an increase in accessibility to the infrastructure from a private industry entity. Mm. So oh it gets God. very, very specific. So like as you're going through, it's just, and so we, I did the whole thing. Now I have to say, it did get put back on the list. We got denied, and then with some of this funding that's coming through, it's kind of in a waiting area right now to see if it, if it might get picked up. And it's a million dollars, which would be wonderful, because there are some real serious, serious things that we could be using that money for. So there's, that's the other thing with the Mass Works. Um, I think that's the second grant that we've applied for. We did get some, you know, uh, some uh, the best practice ones that came out through the community contact grant, mm -hmm. but it's not for infrastructure. Hadley does great getting stuff that doesn't have anything to do with infrastructure, mm -hmm. and infrastructure is what we what we really. That's need our big here. thing. Well, yeah. you know, I, I don't. I mean, I haven't looked at all the details. I can um, look at the tables that I've seen that uh, sort of describe at least on top level sort of you know uh, indications of what the grant is for. 
but there's a lot of water infrastructure, a lot of energy efficiency infrastructure, a lot of you know road ma road stuff, whatever. I, I'd I love mean, to so, see. I'd love the help to be able to screen through it. That would yeah. Be huge. So so that that is there. Um, depending on what happens on Tuesday, there might be more help coming from the state yeah. <laughs> in terms yeah. of actually having a point of contact at the at the you know state level to help communities figure that out and provide more technical assistance. Yeah. It's not going to be there immediately just because they have to ramp up whatever. Um, but anyway, the point is, I think we're there, you know, a lot of this, these very specific criteria that screen you out, I think we probably have to get creative how to combine, say, an MVP grant for implementation of something which is nature based because that's what that program is trying to promote, plus, you know, combining green and gray infrastructure, right, the, the concrete stuff, mm -hmm. and, and doing that through federal funds. So I think it's actually possible. It just needs real creative combining. Yeah. We, we do have um, that specific engineer. He is working on a grant right now for MVP, um, just because we do have kind of this checklist of what we want to accomplish with the plan. So um, he would be, a, it would be great to connect the yeah. two of you with your knowledge. Um, I'd love to talk to I you. know so many things at a little level at everything that has come across my desk in the past two and a half years. So I can come here and sound like I know a little bit about what I'm talking about, but this is so far, yeah, yeah. so goes into a whole level that, that we rely on the engineers. So going back to MVP, and I don't know, were you on the original MVP committee in town or no? No, I wasn't no, there yet. None of us. No. So it seems like no one it was... It happened right before COVID. Okay. It really January. seems like this is an ideal committee well, to... Right, and we, oh. we knew nothing I about... I start a new committee. Exactly. Right, we didn't know anything about this until about a week ago. <laughs> but uh, well, So does that committee even still exist? No, I don't mm. think so. No, and here's, here's the so other reason why... So are you working with MVP by yourself, nobody else? So let, I'll tell you where we are right now. So two and a half years ago, when um, the MVP, that plan had just... They, they'd had the focus group and done the plan, yeah. and that had just uh, nice. um, been completed... That's when I started, and that's when our former DPW director was um, uh, Chris Okafer. Chris, kind of not as involved, and we then he left, and we had Scott take over. Scott's also in the learning curve, and we literally, Chris, uh, Scott, and I have been working on crisis management. Honestly, we have. We, if you knew that infrastructure that has failed in town, oh, um, it's in bad shape. It, it's in bad shape, and honestly, I, I got another call today. It's it's almost every other week, and now with the with the widening project, we are doing a lot of um, working collaboratively with MassDOT with some things that we find that the engineers might not have caught. And once we opened it up, we've got problems. So, it's uh, when I tell you Scott's hands are to he's just swamped, and and me, I'm just trying to be whatever support I can. But I thought about that that today. This would be a great group to provide some of that support, and you've got the you've got the expertise here that it has the access and knows about those grants and who can identify it. And, and one of the hardest things is, and that's why you get so dependent on the engineers, some of these grants have to already be engineered. Like this, you know, even this, uh, the widening project, yeah. we had already had an engineer who did the work because MassDOT paid for it. So. Yeah, I, I know it's a typical problem that the planning grants don't come, you know, they're not synced up with the implementation grants and it's a big mess, and anyway, trying to work on it at a federal and, and state level to get I that improved. But that. I'm but wondering if it would help us to get, um, you know, Carrie involved or Comfort. They're very involved, and, and Joe's really involved, and in, in especially when it comes to small towns who don't yeah. have an engineer. And so she, I have to say, both. Both Representative Kerry, Senator Comfort, have been have been strong advocates yep. for small towns. And when I had the problem with Mass Works, she actually got involved, got okay. some of the people to come and debrief what were the challenges. And so she heard it. She heard what some of the challenges are. And I have to say, each time Community One Stop comes out, it's a little bit simpler, a little bit. Mm -hmm. So they're he they are listening to what the, what we're struggling with here. And it's Western Mass, and, and whatever you say. It, yeah, Western Mass is not number one on the priority list. <laughs> so, 
Um, I already sent a letter of introduction to Rich Finn and just say, hey, how can we combine? How can we work that. together? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's set. Um, if you work with the accountant and maybe a few of us to get these numbers in order, because that's that's what we really need. Yeah. Um, and just getting sort of the utility bills all unified so we actually know the numbers that it costs yeah. Hadley this much for oil and it costs this much for electricity yeah that. it was a little hard getting some of the propane um, yeah. estimates and, I, and I, I don't want to call out the yeah. company but I, I don't I don't know that you're going to get what you want don't we get bills from that we get it, I think what, there was something missing on the bills I think there was something missing that we needed to get from them, and I don't. It's yeah. not kilowatts; it's something else. So I think we need to get more information. It could be millions of BTUs or something like that. But still, there's going to be a dollar amount there. I don't. Yeah, but that's up and down with the price of fuel yeah. and all of that. Okay. But that's just such an important piece mm -hmm. for this green communities grant, and we've done so much of it. And we hope that we can button it up. I think it's just us in South Hadley for Hampshire County. That's it. Yeah, but you understand they have their own electric company. That's true. You're right. That's yeah. true. Can I, can I need to know what's going on in each building. Can I just ask, so if you knew where to go for funding, did would you have the capacity to write the grants and do all that legwork? Um, or is there like some... I appreciate some you asking that. Um, it's right now the engineers when they know that it's a it's it's going to be a grant that's kind of a no-brainer they 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 write it they manage it but they get funding for it they mm -hmm. get in re in return for, that the time. grant pays for it. so when it's a grant like that i've got the support um and they're always they're usually always i'll get a call from them and say hey this we, we need to go for this grant because they that's one of the things you do develop with these engineers is they yep. they've either been with you for a long time the engineer that I'm working with from the dike he goes back before 2014 mm -hmm. so he's been a part of this whole process so he sees something and he he's on it so I think that um, uh, always could use help <laughs> always because um, that's what's happened it, municipal um, slow turtle pace is because typically there's not enough staff to manage yeah, yeah. it and totally get it. getting the grant is one thing but managing it and the reporting afterwards is, oh. is just as hard that's yeah. what i'm asking that, yeah. yes yeah. so so speaking of when there's something i mean let us know yeah you know and maybe we can oh yeah have a, well and how about solar for the library and for this building so what this building we're about help? to go out to bid okay. we just finished up the we went worked oh. we have one of our attorneys uh does solar um, nice. bid. So we're just about to go out to bid. We just, I th we have three right now that are emergency type things that going out. But I'm I'm considering that one of them because Jane's going to kill me if I don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to kill and me. And so any of the solar companies in the valley or wherever can we bid have to on advertise. It? We have to go through procurement. Okay. We have to advertise, and um, who, you know whoever responds. So what's happening with the library? So I'm, I'm going to give you the surface. Uh, my understanding is that that roof, um, there's some significant issues with the roof. And so they are in the middle of working with the company as far as what needs to be done. The but we can't, as a town, I can't go out to, to bid if I know that that can't, can't, right. can't, doesn't have the capacity to hold the solar. Wow. Is there any kind of well, deadline where the roof has to be repaired by? Oh, yeah, it's under warranty. But it needs yeah. to be repaired. Yeah. But does it have to be done within six months, within a year, or something like that? I, I would think there is, but I don't know. Okay. I would think there is. Is it the entire roof, or just an area? Um, or, you know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But enough yeah. impactful, if that's the right term, enough that I can't. I can't. We can't. We can't own that liability at yeah. this point. Oh no. Yeah. So there's another. This is another thing that people recognize that repairs on roofs um, are often. A, a, a hurdle to solarize so some of the infrastructure money is for just that this kind of case awesome so I'll try to get that information yes, to you what great. programs are available and that's coming from the federal level or federal. the state yes that's yeah. great yeah. Well, and again, you know, you have the offer if there's a way we can help on any of the solar this is actually me being here is more helpful to me. I'm being selfish because I'm I'm seeing help. But this should be warranty <laughs> work, right? It's warranty work, work, yes. So maybe you don't need yeah. that. But, you know, maybe even for other buildings like school, solarization, 
whatever. I mean, we have so many buildings in this town that are mm-hmm. huge that could be, you know, even if it's a partnership with uh, with whoever owns the buildings, like the Walmart or whatever, right? right? I mean, these are huge surfaces. We don't need to put it on fields. We can put it on those types of yeah, um, be surfaces. Yeah, you're going to a lot of knowledge for me. Well, that's... Well, and that's something we need to be thinking about because there are benchmarks. I mean... We do need to solarize in Hadley. All, everybody's, all I'm, towns. Are I mean, I'd love to, to talk to you about ideas. You know, so many people have created um, parking lots, and or there are parking lots, yeah. and they put shading on it, and those shade things yeah, are basically Nissan solar panels, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that is both adaptation and mitigation thinking, because those hot cars, you don't want to get the kids or the teachers right. or anybody in it, right? <laughs> Same on all the parking lots for in front of Whole Foods and whatever. I mean, that could be shaded, and right. it could be surface um, area on which you could put solar roofs. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. happy to talk to you about a thousand yeah. other ideas. So with a related issue, Eversource was going after some um, sort of permission from the town to solarize their yeah. facility. Yeah. Has that been resolved, or they is were, that they ongoing? They were in last night, and they 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 uh, the footprint smaller. Okay. The footprint smaller. For, you know, and for whatever reason, it's it's going to be smaller than it was originally intended. So I, I have all, it's on board. If you get onto yeah. the it, about board docs, it does have the layout. The, it, it's a, so they're look, they're giving us a template. So we have to sh- uh, send a letter of support on behalf of the select board. And do you happen to know what was the arrangement that the select board struck? Um, what will EverSource do for us? So what they talked about, we have nothing in writing, but what we what they've talked about is we do have a significant area of environmental justice population, and the intent is to either provide uh, a reduction in the rate or grants. I remember what Tyler was saying yesterday. Um, so they are going to be presenting um, options that will be beneficial to certain residents, and I think they're going to focus on that environmental justice area. So is that like Golden Court? That area? so it's bigger than you think. I, I would have to. I have this sheet, um, and I didn't realize it was as big as it was in Hadley. But mm-hmm. it's it's pretty significant. I just all I can say is it's, it's mm-hmm. that it's area. On the way to stop and shop, mm-hmm. I believe there's some yeah. housing there. Oh, where I live. <laughs> no, on the stop and uh, oh, the Mountain stop and View. Shop, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a few places. And okay. one of the concerns that Michael had raised before is that they. Um, Eversource wanted to put a storage facility right into the floodplain, and we were wondering if there was any way of getting them to lift that out of the flood zone so that we actually have so that energy. So my brain available. does get overloaded. It has a certain capacity, but I don't remember any hearing that. But that doesn't mean it did not come up. But I apologize. If, if you could check that that, that is insured. Well, Battery storage? Yeah, I mean, like basically to, to yeah. elevate it enough so it's not going to get flooded when... You know, the dike doesn't protect us, or... Next conversation. Yep. Yeah, yes. right. That well, exactly. that whole area back there behind Hopkins, I guess everywhere back there is a yeah. floodplain. Are you saying the recent discussion? They're talking about... Mm-hmm. Oh, you yeah. said recent discussion? Mike, you, you know about that more. My understanding was that this proposal at the utility company, I could be wrong, was for a solar installation as well as battery storage. You could be right. Right. Yeah. And flood... It just needs, you know, the whole installment of, of infrastructure that's good for the environment should be at least out, protected so that it doesn't, so it survives the impacts of climate change yeah, that I, will come regardless. Okay. So, I'm just trying to think to have you guys more aware of those discussions. I guess the best thing is to listen, but you, it sounds like you were listening to the meeting. No, I read the oh. first newspaper article about it okay. yeah. a month ago. It just, mm-hmm. In the Gazette. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. how we all found out. So we're wondering what's going on now. You've been good about sometimes pulling us into other conversations. Um, sometimes we just sort of get lucky and we stumble across yeah. other conversations that we should be part of. Yep. Yep. And I will try. I uh, sometimes it's just remembering everything with it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. many things coming at me all day, yeah. but I'll continue to do my best. Mm. Were there other items? There were some things that in particular had. the the MVP. You know what's happened with that first assessment. What's you know, I mean, basically, you know, our our question really is, we want to 
solve issues even if we don't have an emergency declaration. And yeah. if there are things like, you know, moving that forward or helping you out with, you know, any of the other things we discussed, then at least we're making progress. Yeah, I talked to, I said, um, when I talked to Dave yesterday, I said, Dave, can you just give me bullets? Because that's the best way to yeah. talk to me, is bullets. <laughs> and so even though we had more discussion over it, he did, you know, send me an email that kind of just kind of put things in order for me. It was really more for my benefit, but it kind of will help you if I just kind of read it. But Which Dave is this? Dave Roman from CEI okay. Engineering. Yeah. So environmental, I'm sorry. Um, so in 2019 is when they obtained the planning grant, and that's when they held the eight-hour planning workshop. And the top climate-related recommendations were to perform Hadley dike repairs. I'll talk about that. Implement culvert replacement program, improve water supply resiliency by adding redundancy, which is what we're doing with Mount Warner wells. I don't know if you know that, but we're taking baby steps. It's very, very expensive to get those wells back to where they need to be. Um, submit an MVP grant application in 2020 for design of a culvert replacement. That was the one that wasn't awarded. And the next step is to submit another grant application. We need to include a green infrastructure nature-based component, such as construction of a bioretention area, tree planting to enhance stream buffers, et cetera. One of the things he talked about is one of some of the pushback you might get is if you're planting trees on farmland, it's not wanting to take farming space. So, um, and then the next round of funding is the spring of 2023. Um, but they will provide feedback. Um, and that's what I, I wanted to talk to him a little bit more, how we get that feedback um, before a grant is submitted. It just to kind of, to be able to say, this is where Hadley's at, this is where our resources are. Um, and I, I think one of the things, I think touching base with him, he was like, oh, okay, Hadley's interested now. Not that we weren't interested, but because we, Scott and I have just been so busy yeah. We really had no point person to, to get back in touch and say, so this is perfect. This is, you guys are bringing this up. So. Okay. Well, I think there are a whole bunch of things that we could, you know, I mean, you rattled it off fast, so I didn't catch everything, but like tree planting, I, I live on a street that had lost a whole bunch of trees and, you know, it's the best cooling, right, for mm -hmm. the town. So anywhere in on the, along the side of the, the streets, we can fill the gaps back in and basically cool the town, that'll be way better than turning this as the, you know, the emergency heat shelter here, yeah. right? Yeah, so it's that kind of thinking that I'd love to go through your list and yeah. maybe we can brainstorm what we can do to help I think he, identify. I think they'd love to have somebody who really, have an entity like this who really understood. I yeah. think he's feeling like he's always trying to educate me about everything. Well, so I, I don't come back with those brains. Yeah, how can we so combine with Dave? Dave? That's, that's what I think. With him I, I think when he comes, Dave Roman. I Dave think Roman when he comes back from paternity leave, yeah. we definitely okay. want to. We want to have a combined meeting. Yeah. I think. That when is he good. back? Just so that. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to. Ch I'll check. Yeah, be good. Then we can invite him here, and we can yep. brainstorm what those next steps are. And yeah, that would be awesome. Okay. Good. Uh, I'm just reminded, Susie. Uh, few meetings ago, it was like, I can't remember, maybe three or four months ago, there was somebody who was here talking about the, about trees and mm -hmm. shade trees, mm -hmm. um, and he had something very, he had a very specific kind of a tree, <laughs> he was just, um, mentioned that he thought would be uh, really appropriate for, for Hadley. Um, and, and that's Ed Golding, yeah, who visited. And, and that was yeah. It's a particular uh, oak. Yeah, it was a particular oak, and I can't remember exactly the point. I never heard post oaks. Is that what it was? I think so. I wrote that down. <laughs> I, I have like these I notes in here. Maybe so there is a post oak. A copy of clone. I don't know. Yeah, he was incredibly passionate though about that particular tree. Huh. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the dike? Sure. Yes. Right. yes. I, I, I felt. Uh, that we have not done a good job of communicating where we are, um, but I get so involved with it that I think everybody knows about it, so what we're doing. <laughs> so that obviously was one of the first things when I came here and um, met with Rich Niles from Wooded and Curran. So he is the, uh, the engineer and Scott Medeiros, who I've been working with since I started here, and 
right when I was getting here, we were preparing for an annual town meeting in 21. He had already started the conversation, but I had just started, and that's where I got um, a welcoming but scary <laughs> update on the dike. And I don't mean to alarm anybody. It's not, it's, as far as I can tell, nothing's going to happen now. But uh, not, well, it's not raining, there though. are so <laughs> many uh, factors and things that have to happen. But the ultimate goal is to get certified for FEMA. Hmm. which will cost millions and millions of dollars. I'm just going to be upfront and honest, but that doesn't mean we're not taking baby steps. So if you remember... It'll cost us millions of dollars or it cost FEMA? Well, it's, Hadley doesn't have millions and millions no, of dollars. No, but you mean so to repair the dike is going to be... The issue is another thing that we have found with grants is that they don't want to... Re the state or the federal government does not want to fund communities that have not done maintenance, mm. had not done maintenance. And the dike has suffered a lack of maintenance mm. for many, many, many years, many years. Now, we're not a part of the Army Corps because it is owned by the town, which is, it's unusual. It's like, so we don't get a lot of access to things like that. But I'm going to try to summarize um, where we're at. I don't know if you've seen any of the... the the PowerPoint on the FEMA mapping, which has been put on hold a little bit. Um, I think it was a bigger project than they anticipated. But at the same time, that um, uh, Rich Niles, we the town approved for phase two. Um, are you talking about those maps that are at the, in the appendix? It's the flood map. It's yeah. the flood zone. At the end that, of the change assessment. Yeah. Wait, wait, can I ask, are, are, is, is Hadley participating in the National Flood Insurance Program? We're, we are, we have to, don't you we have, have a to? firm? Yeah. No, you don't have to. You can choose, but it helps you if you, do, if you participate. So, uh, yeah, I can't, then I can't answer you. I, everything we're doing, I thought, was part of what we, we had to be doing. So. Well, I mean, basically, in order to get any funds from FEMA and probably ultimately from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to fix the dike, you need to basically show that you are having a plan for this is what we're doing for flood mitigation. This is what yeah. we're doing. This is what this whole plan is. So we're in phase two of it. Phase one was, I think, about four or five years ago. This, Which was doing what? This is phase two. The mapping part, or um, it's it is looking it is looking at the rail trail the that right there, seeing what can be done there. Um, but right now, what we're doing is, and I'm gonna, I'll have to send that out because I had an update from Rich Niles exactly where we're at, but I don't want to spend the whole time digging through it. I did bring a lot of stuff on um, the, the dike. But um, one of the things that we focused on a lot, there's a, a, so many different layers of it, but uh, just the maintenance alone is incredibly expensive. So. The engineers broke it down for me um, and broke it down into amounts, it, what it would cost. What, so I'm looking at it's getting placed in our um, uh, capital improvement plan. Oh, good. So we've in, we <laughs> increased the, the operating budget last year for maintenance. And what that's doing, it's going, it's getting the rabbit dens and the holes and, and getting those filled up. But a really fascinating um, uh, tool that Rich did was they did a full visual of the dike. So it was a um, drone, and mm. they went from nice. the water, and they went above, and it was fascinating to see what the issues were. Some of the issues mm. that we challenged with, I can't find a piece of equipment big enough to the arm that can go down, I can't believe people are going to listen to this because it's going to be so not technical, okay. but the arm of a mower that can go down to the to the water level. So we yeah. have a whole area that we just can't have access to. And certainly it is so steep, that's where it's, it doesn't meet the criteria because it's so steep. It needs to be wider and flatter with a gradual slope. And that means total, really, a, a, like a reconstruction. Yeah. And so we're we're we are working on every area that we can do for maintenance. And I and I have a list here. Um, mowing's one of them. Even to bring a mower in, we ha we had to kind of guide the mow who who was bringing the piece of equipment. You can't put ditches in. You can't. It's got to be smooth. It's got to be. You can't create anything that's going to start to tear. So away. are you talking about? By West Street near the Alexandra Dawson walkway, like uh, like put so part of the, the dike, whole, the whole thing, the whole part, especially that's going along the river. Okay. Yeah, it's that we can't reach it, and we haven't had the equipment 
nor could we really afford the equipment. Yeah. So it's the cost involved with um, outsourcing that to get the right equipment. It's really hard to find that that's going to be able to go down because it's so steep. It's too dangerous. It seems a couple of goats. <laughs> it's actually not Seriously, funny no. because yeah. it's, in Seriously. Santa Cruz, that's exactly People what they did. Are they using just goats. sent in the goats. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, a long highway. Because they can handle the, the steepness. Oh yeah, definitely. Communities that have similar problems, right? And so being able to talk to—I mean, goats. It's no joke, Carolyn. Really. really. People and Carolyn, for this. for a long slope, you know, that's where an MVP grant that that, today, actually, that said, uh, yeah. you know, you need nature-based solutions. Perfect. Goats. And you just yeah. replanted with stuff that is, you know, natural to this area instead of just grass, whatever, and you can get that. So, well, let me go over what, like, because so, it's a reality check for people of why even the maintenance is so expensive. If, if I was to do... So all, are we talking about maintenance now to yeah. get it up to code, or are we... This is just getting it, to, it, it this is we all... We have to take care of it the best we can, and then... Until, to stop until it from deteriorating, well, gotcha. to stop it, but also to get us to the point of the repair. Okay. So it ranges everywhere. So we had it. We have it inspected once or twice a year, and that's where that inspection came in. We hadn't had it, I think, for a year or so. Um, but the mowing, which has to be done, um, and it's it is difficult with with our equipment. Some of it we do have to outsource. Yes. Um, but clearing the vegetation, drainage system maintenance. So we, we have little culverts in there. We have little pipes that are yeah. deteriorated and falling apart, and that's where the animals are making their home. Um, the pest management. Uh, there's things we do have, like the fire department does have sandbags. You need to have stuff available at all times in case anything's to happen. So that's another whole part of it. But so just the yearly maintenance is about twenty-four thousand, and we did we did budget for that last year. Um, just to get, have the materials and the supplies, like inflatable pipe plugs and erosion control matting, seating, fill, sandbags. That's fifteen thousand. Um, just to the minor repairs. Uh, to reestablish re sod cover, repair rutting, fill animal burrows, the Norma Tuck Rail Trail levee penetration, spot repair, and sediment removal, that's almost 30,000. Now this is pre-COVID, so I'm telling you, you can add 20% to all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the major repairs um, that they identified last year with the inspection is the, the need for design and permitting um, just to do the major repairs. But in all of that, with the, the riverbank penetration and the repair of the West Street levee penetration, that's almost nine hundred thousand dollars. So it, it is it is stuff that we are trying to be able to make it affordable for Hadley to do, um, but also have it be thoughtful and make sense. So but there's the so much more. We but wait, I, the worse it's going to yeah, get. Yeah, I think the most important thing for me is that people, this is giving me an opportunity to make sure the community knows that it is the top priority that Dyke is. And we do a lot behind the scenes and I just, it's easy to assume, okay, so I'm doing all this. Well, everybody knows this is taking place. So, um, yeah, my point, for instance, when I hear that and we went to the town hall, to town meeting and we vote for uh, um, spending like almost seven hundred thousand dollars in in the field, I, I, that's what we, we yeah. spend seven hundred thousand dollars in the field for game, for you know, for, for playing in the in, uh, oh the softball fields. Yeah, and yeah. So that was CPA. Yeah, that is like a, how uh, how that how that was that a funding source that we couldn't right. we couldn't access. Yes, yeah. so is there a way yeah. like a fine. But we are going to chip yeah. away. You are going to say at the annual town meetings that I'm going to do my best to have what makes sense. Yeah. Um, and if it's over the, if I can't put it in the operating budget, it needs to go into a capital request. Um, this is where it will be certainly helpful to have this committee here and educate. And I, and, and I think this is just really important that we keep you in part of these communications with. Just you know. to clarify a question. You said that the thing in order needed to become more gradual. And higher. Yeah, and I'm using my language, so okay. just know there's I'm much better I'm ways to describe curious, it. Is that an issue of just creating a mobility issue? No, it's that it's to make the certification. Strong. It's to make it strong. Yes. So you know to adjust the slopes and things like that, riverside, street side, will will you have to like claim some area by eminent domain and things like that? It could. 
Mm. It could, and it, and they have to work alongside, um, uh, you know, the, the flood mapping because that is not completed yet for um, Hadley. So it's still working alongside of that as Who's well. Who's doing the flood mapping? Wait a minute, the flood mapping isn't finished. So they have pushed that back a little bit. I don't know where it is right who, now. Who? They, we have a flood map, but it's not. They 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 are updating that. Who is FEMA? Okay. So. Um, and is this yeah. effort to improve the dike strictly limited to reinforcing the existing dike, or are we talking about phase two where we're wrapping the dike around the rest of the town? That's what's being assessed right now. That's part of the phase two. Is, is the town I have a considering, or has it ever considered the, you said, the Army Corps of Engineers owns other so parts of the river? We, yeah, we, we, we have spent a great deal of time, and yeah, I Hadley does not, we cannot get support from there. Now, I am getting support. You, you can't get support from, from the Army engineers. Because they're not interested in... They don't own, they don't own it. They don't but I mean... How about if we get it to Yeah. Right. They don't want it. But it sounds like they're more set up as a uniform entity to manage... Yeah, groups. honestly, the engineer can would be the best person to talk to, and he can explain why it, it's, it's, an, it's an oddity. But he can explain better than I can. But I have the deal. Well, that's that, but that's really interesting because that'll affect you know where you can get money from for yes. that. Right. Um, I mean, if it's a you know U.S. Army Corps of Engineer, um, like under their jurisdiction, then you can get water um, money through the Water Resources Development Act, um, which is basically the way to <laughs> allocate funding for th these kinds of major Army Corps projects. Mm -hmm. Um, dike repairs and so on. If it's if, who owns it, is it just the town owns it, or, or like it's we actually have a deed. You have a deed on. Okay. I wonder what year. You know, is that going back to thirty six or thirty eight? You know, when it was repaired after the last flood. The last repair of the dike was a one, I think. We had a we had a breach. Yeah. Are we absolutely sure that the core doesn't want it, or is it that Hadley is so parochial historically that it wants to own it? So I can tell you there have been exhaustive conversations over it, and um, over them Rich, Neil, be, Rich Niles would be the best person to answer why. Didn't uh, it seems yeah, like I don't know. We'd have to see if he's available. Yeah, yeah. And, um, he's, he's but he's really good. So Carolyn, have you been? Do you ever? You know, talk to other towns. I, it seems like not long ago, Northampton did a big flood control related, they did wor work on their dike. So I, I do rely on the engineer about what's available to us, but Northampton's a different animal when it comes to funding and staffing, and I, I don't know I, what I, they did or I, anything. We, I, it's been a part of conversations as rich as I've worked with rich what other communities are doing um, but, but he's on top of stuff and he's you know. been, he's been working on this he worked for another company going back 2014 so I would say nobody knows that area as well as he do except the gentleman who was at that who spoke who knows the dike oh the yeah I'm uh, sorry for but he's not an right engineer now. he's well, no, he's a first responder. Yeah, um, he's a yeah. first responder. You know, so, but as far as the engineering Josh. aspect, Josh, no, yeah. I, I will not. I can't. I can't sit in the shoes of an engineer yeah. and try to answer that. But they've done a lot. Like we got, he got us in touch with what's called the Silver Jackets, and they were kind of a sub, a subgroup of FEMA, where their primary role. We wrote a, we wrote and submitted like a grant proposal for them to do education. So they're going to be working with us to just at least educate the residents who live around that area. Um, what do you do? And so that that's a really really important part of this. Um, so, so you know, one thing that's likely to occur once you get the updated maps from FEMA is that flood insurance rates will go up. Um, because, you know, most areas are in higher flood zones than they mm -hmm. used to be zoned at. So I think it's really important that you be ready for that, and we really? should have a conversation yeah, about... Planning's ready mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's not going to be pretty. No. Um, I just want to get send that out. I have no idea what, what the... And I don't know where they are at, because they are behind in that, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let us know when you know when that 
that's about to happen. I mean, they have to have a whole bunch of public meetings about that anyway, yeah. um, but to have that well facilitated and not only by FEMA, I think would be very wise. And I know who's going to help. <laughs> Right, so we have a number of different things that people are going to be working on. I'll stay in touch with Rich Finn about um, green communities and the energy review. Um, I'll send you a copy of the draft that we got from Jacinta. It was very much a working copy. There was there were a number of aspects of it, like the population was five times. Well, it's horrible. She took actually she used South Adley. That report. Um, it was Southwick, I think. It was oh, a Southwick, different, yeah. It was a different community, and they she just... didn't even write uh, up ours. She well, they were just inserted. adapting it to ours. I mean, they do a good one, and then they just um, work it over. But clearly, it, it needs some work um, before we can, you know, meet the criteria and send it in. But if really, you just really get us those want to... bill amounts from the accountants. Yeah. Well, and the... Yeah, I'm trying to remember, what was the, does, she, are you st does it matter yet, the 12 months, you want 12 months, right, I would imagine? Yes. And yeah. we were... It was just... For the num every yeah. municipal building, because it, right. the numbers and are so messed up. If, if it's propane, then you probably would have a couple of years, so that you can kind of, because the tank, you don't know how much was in the tank when they fill it, that's the problem. Right. That's why it's so hard. Yeah. And post COVID figures into this as yeah. well. Yeah, things I'm going to tell you, it's, it's, it will be a little bit of a challenge. And, an, and this goes back again where I had a complete turnover in administrative at the DPW. And that is one of the cha the propane bills were a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, I think the company supplier mm. has a good record. No response. Wow. I don't want to say I'm yeah, public. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. A couple of tries. Wow. Well, well, why not? I, I would know if they replied, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good business to be dealing with. They can't come up. Seriously. We can try again. We can try again. I'm sure if you don't pay the bill, immediately I'm going to be... <laughs> yeah, by law, I can't not pay the bill. <laughs> I have to pay it within 30 days. <laughs> I, I know on our farm, if I call up the energy supplier and ask them to provide that. Yeah. Also, there are... I don't know if there's a way that you can send a copy to the Better Business Bureau. So like, uh, excuse me, uh, this company is not uh, responding to us. Mm -hmm. Like she has time for yeah. that. Oh. Yeah. And, um, a couple other people could call them. Yeah. yeah. It's are, are you not allowed to share the I mean, Oh, I know it's we, important. I just... We should I, be able to know. I mean, this should be public, yeah. you know. I think I know. I mean, we're paying these that. bills. Yeah. So we should be able to know. Yeah. And I'm just yeah. wondering too, sort of new topic, just the um, electrical aggregation. Mm -hmm. Like who is in charge of that committee for t the town and things like that? There's no committee for that. That's something that the select board approves, and mm. the aggregate program, the opting in, opting out. Um, I could certainly, if you ever wanted to um, meet who I work with. But at Constellation or at like our um, provider or uh, I would I almost want to say it's the broker in a yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. It's I don't know if that's tip really what is yes. what his role is, but he works as a broker. And do you know like when is our next term? When when is yes, it time to read? It's coming up because I just they've just contacted me to get some updated electrical mm. bills. Okay. So it's actually on the main page of the town website. Okay. okay. Yeah. That we're good it's really hard. I feel bad because I wish there was a better way to educate people. Because if you, whether you're for it or not, it's very difficult to. Am I opt? Am I signing this or am I not? So people are automatically enrolled unless, unless they, they don't opt want to out. be. Right. And, and it is confusing. But I don't know that they found a better way to do it. That's how every town does it. I mean, yeah. if you pay attention to what you're reading, it's not that hard to understand. Yeah, but it's it's gotten it's gotten tricky. We've been contacted by people in Shutesbury and other towns of saying, "What's going on with you folks?" And um, you know, just because they're trying to figure it out for them. Yeah. Like how, you know, how can we do better? And it just seems like electrical rates are about to really soar. everything. So is. our rates are locked in then, right? Yeah, we but we're could, we are reaching that point now where it's kind of like you know, it's not like you're going out to bid, but. Mm -hmm. They're getting the price again, and they're gonna. I, I'm sure they're gonna be out. I thought our contract was good through 2024. We start now. 
you start now looking at the prices and stuff. But there, there's more to it than that. It's not like it's locked in until 24. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. We're still subject to I'd have to look at the, I'd, I'd have to like yeah. look at it to give you a really good answer. Um, and then last topic that came up, um, the Hopkins heating system. I don't know if you're at all tuned into that. So Hopkins is going through a pretty significant facelift or something. You know, there's a $12 million plan. I've seen it in the paper. So I, we have, that has been made available, but I have not gone through it. It's a huge um, okay. plan. So I, I, I'm not the right person to right. talk on that. We were just wondering, um, like, the heating system, you know, what yeah, they're going know Okay. Yeah, All right. So that, that's a school committee? Yeah. Or, or you could just call the office and say who's the best person. Call the, the superintendent? Or call well, there's someone from the school committee who couldn't make it today, evidently, but um, that's something he wants to meet with us about. Oh, can they get a better system? They say with the new IRA bill that's coming through that there are some ways to get better sort of electrically based systems yep. that could save the town some money. Well, that'd be great. Okay. Well, and the, you know, we should look into possibilities uh, for the ground heat pump, um, like uh, UMass Amherst demonstrated at the climate day, that sort of thing. I mean, I yeah. wish we had figured that out before you did all the road repair, because it's just, you already dig it up once, you know. Mm. <laughs> but um, that's one thing that um, a school committee person has mentioned about. Hopkins. If you have his email, repair. I mean, I, I got some stuff okay. together that I can send him. Information um, about pumps? Gra uh, ground source heat pumps. Heat yeah. pumps. Yeah. And also, this, I mean, new as of in the last couple of months, I sent the link to yeah. everybody, that White House, mm -hmm. you know, all this grant money for uh, retrofitting schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's what he was talking about as a way to really save some. Um, right. Um, this I mean, ideally, and, and, and there's grant money for specifically upgrading the heating system to some sort of heat pump and putting solar. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's what you want to do because otherwise you're just still burning fossil fuels by paying for electricity to run those heat pumps. Yeah. But if you have solar, then... The only thing you're paying for is the equipment, but it, oh, where did I see it? In the newspaper, actually, I sent you guys the link. They're looking at doing this on the Amherst schools, mm -hmm. well, on the high school and the middle school, yeah. and whatever company they hired, they, they worked out over the lifetime of the building how much money the town would save if they go ahead and do it. And it's like four million dollars. I mean, it's well, there's the whole leasing approach, right? Yeah. So you don't actually have to buy the equipment; you lease it, and you just pay a fixed amount, and it's less than the electricity bill that you is going up and up and up. So, mm -hmm. right. I mean, that's that kind of approach. Solar Run is doing that. You know, that might be something for a lot of buildings, mm -hmm. private and public, yeah. to consider. Well, for next month's meeting, maybe we can get a, a guest from the school committee. I'll, I'll reach out to him and, okay. and see. Yeah. Okay. And I can reach out to Rich. I mean, he's, he does not live in the area, so it might be easier to have him call in, but he is... Is he, it Rich Niles? Rich you're talking? Niles. Okay. He's just, you know, he... I just think he's the most knowledgeable as far as it comes to the dike and what's available. He can certainly answer the Army Corps yeah. um, mm -hmm. question. Well, Where does he live? Yeah. Um, I'm sure in the Boston area. Okay, that's my guess. And then I know you had mentioned Dave Romaine. He'd be another good person to yeah. talk to. Yeah. All right. Okay. I got him right in between when the baby was crying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good dad. <laughs> Great. So, anything else from me? I mean, I'm. It, it's this is. That's a lot. That I think. Well, it's just real helpful now that I know that I have some help, and this oh, might be definitely. the best committee to kind of. Well, that's kind of the thing that we've heard from people who, at least my take on some of the residents who, who didn't like our um, climate emergency declaration, were like, this isn't, 
You're asking us to agree to do stuff that we don't even really know what it is. Bring us something we need to do in Hadley and let us vote on it, like fixing the dike and all this stuff. I mean, I don't know. I think we can put that declaration on hold and just move on to yeah, getting the work done. Work it yeah. did really stir up good conversations. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I have I to say. Oh, I know. Yeah. That Everybody was just so respectful, but it was really, I thought, the way each person presented their perspective, I thought was, it was really interesting. That's what town meeting is all about. Mm -hmm. That, you know, some people don't like town meeting because everybody gets oh, up. No, I like but it's it. really your best civic engagement is town yep. meeting. It really is. Were you able to attend, Catalina? Yes. Were you there? Okay, I thought so. Right, right. I couldn't tell. But um, I, I, I am very shy about speaking in public. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, I cannot. Well, and Susie, your statement, and Michael really yeah. appreciated what you folks shared. Right. Um, I was surprised with the way a lot of people sort of took it and ran with it. You know, we didn't comment about electrical tractors being available. You know, some, yeah, it was really unusual with some of the responses, but um, certainly, you know, it was nearly a split vote. Got it vote. on everybody's mind, you know? Yeah. I mean, um, I have a question. Is there a way um, that we can get funding for this committee? Can we get money for this committee? You know, what like for? A, for for education. You know, like we, for for uh, doing um, for yeah for like a program that we want to do, like a, for educating the, the public about what is happening in Hadley. Like for instance, that that uh, workshop that we have, workshops, talks. Uh, flyers. I have that is the thing about the compost that I want to do, but it's like everything takes money, you know. And so, is there a way to have extra, some money for for this committee? I think it would be how much are you looking for? I don't think too much, but at least to be able to do um, outreaching and uh, information. I mean, it's as a committee, as residents, you can request funding. I would like to do that. So if we, if we came up with a budget um, for what we would want? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. And then there's philanthropic sources, yeah. you know, to actually... If you look at the Community Foundation of Western Mass, there's lots of little funds. You'll get a lot more from there. Well, there or at the same time, what the heck? Culture That's where you are going to get some for as they call it, but there's, there's almost no money. Exactly. Yeah. Can I just ask you, what were you able to? Was any? Could anybody open anything in that email? Were you able of those to open? that list? No. no. Nothing. Okay. All right. I do have a few copies of the workshop that that was first put on by CEI. Is that the first it. MVP? I'll take one. Um, I printed yes. that. Out. Yeah, so, that'd be great. That's um, the one you have? Yeah. Okay. I wish it was in color, but... I know, that's yeah, what I'm for. We don't have color printing. all those maps and stuff at the end. I didn't print that out because I want to print Does it. Does anybody else do a couple of copies? Yeah, so let's let's talk so that I can... Did um, you guys want one? Yeah. I, I have a, a yeah. digital okay. copy, so... This is really handy. Thank you for running that for us. Yeah, and so, you know, forgive me for not having the technical wording yeah. or stuff. And no, but at that. least but we we didn't know you were doing anything. Yes, yeah. We knew the, you know, we look at this assessment, never heard anything about it whatsoever, and we're like, oh, my God. Like, here we are just trying to get going on this, and it, this has already been done. And so that's what we wanted. Yes, it was an great. update for you, yeah. from you, so it's good to know that. Hey, it would be great to have this entity or anybody from it to be involved with the conversations because it certainly would help the DPW director and myself just because we are swamped. Just stuff. get let us know what you want yeah. us to do. Yeah. I'm just going to include you in the conversations so oh, you guys yeah. can, you know. Great. Say, yeah. But, is that it? Yeah. Thank you. I think. All right. Well, they have to think about the compost, yeah. so it's, but she doesn't have to know. No, 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 but we can move on to compost. It's also on the agenda. Right, right, right. I'll see yes. in a minute. I'll be back. Yeah, yeah. So, Catalina, if you want to share about yeah. that. 
right. Thank you, Carol. So as you know, and thank you, uh, Jack, for sending me that, that, that uh, uh, article that you submitted from the Washington Post. It says um, that methane em emissions are rising faster than ever before, raising questions about humanity's ability to limit the greenhouse gas that is 80 times more potent than carbon dioxide in the near term. So, methane is 80 times more dangerous than what we are talking about, yeah. cars. So, Christina, without you going on and on, or Catalina, I think that your idea to do a promotion in town to, like, advertise composting yes. is a great idea because it's available to everyone. Correct, yes. We have compost, well, we're out of them right now, but we'll have 10 more compost bins available. Yeah. But we now, there is grant money that I'm using to buy compost bins. Mm -hmm that turn around and sell it to residents for $25. Mm -hmm. So anybody can buy a bin and do backyard composting. Everybody's using USA for their Okay, so but the only people that can use the a compost bin at the transfer station are people with dump stickers, is that correct? Right, but I, yeah, that was okay. third. So okay. there's composting at the transfer station right. for people that use that. People that use USA, which is, I guess, everyone else, unless you live in an apartment like where I live, it's, I forget, some other company. But anyway, everyone using USA, they do offer curbside pickup of compost. But that's why they got, it's available. But that people know that compost is more potent than having solar panels, than driving an electric car. You know what I mean? So. I feel that we need a huge education to our our town. Say, let's do it. Let, let's participate in this, like the schools. We need to get the schools and, and, and do it I'm you know telling you, Catalina, that she, she does not want interference. I've talked to Ann. I mean, I put together a plan for them, and the gist of it was she wants it to the students Whatever they're going to do should be generated by the students. She does not want any outside help or influence. Well, well, that's why, like, we need education and we need kids knowing. You know, is there I any, agree any, with you. anything that we can do to really, um, and even the the uh, representative, like, if if they don't do it, they from the state they have to come something that is like. If as a climate change committee, if there's something that we can do that is doable, doable is this compose. So I know, I know, like if you are trying, I did it, but it's no, I anyway just went specifically right like what I think making the banner for the transfer station is a right. great idea. Yeah, yeah. What else are you thinking that, that could you be what to do? Uh, are you well, thinking of like doing some kind of program in the schools, offering some we kind can't. of program? We they, can't. They, we're not, she won't let us. But for instance, I was thinking, how about if, uh, this is a program that we are trying to say to people, let's participate, the whole community, in creating a banner at, with the cultural council, mm -hmm. <laughs> to we'll get the money, uh, to get our people doing art to um, do a banner promoting compose, saying like compose is life. Thank you. And um, so at least if we can get um, a prize for children to participate, that we can start to go like a party, you know, like a, and say like 20% of Hadley are doing compose, or 50% of Hadley are doing compose. So instead of fighting it, can we get a way to make it a part, maybe like a community Well, what you're talking about is if our whole, you know, solid waste management and handling trash, if it was, if a trash pickup was contracted by the city with a hauler and the town 
the town ran our trash pickup, then that's a whole different thing. Then you can, you, you have a reason to get in touch with residents and tell them this, that, and the other thing. We're doing, the, I mean, I just, I don't know, years ago I started, I got on the mailing list for Cam, town of Cambridge, city of Cambridge, and their recycling. I mean, I, lo I love their, their page. Cambridge runs all the, tr the trash, everything. Comp composting is a really big deal. They talk it up. They provide the containers. Here's what's going on. There are articles to read. All that, that's how you can mm -hmm. communicate with residents. But we're not doing that in Hadley. Is there a way that Hadley we, is hands off? Okay, but, hands off trash. But it, could we do at least start the first with the school? And I don't know. Go the for it. I'm staying out of it. I already tried, <laughs> and I was told point blank. Yeah. Sure, you can meet with. The, I mean, it's very frustrating. I know. You know. I, know. I think schools run that way for a reason, like. So that that's right. Come up organically from inside that's schools. right. Because the only way it's going to work voicing, is if right. there are people in the school who are into it, have and that kind of enthusiasm. Or students' ideas about the environment. Let's run with that. Right. You know? So I did meet with this parent teacher. The principal was in on it. Group at the elementary school. This has been like know, a couple months ago, and there's one science teacher there that's gung ho about composting, but. What their what the principal said is I guess before COVID, they had started th themselves a, a zero waste mentality, and they didn't get as far as composting, but they got very, you know, involved with recycling and trying to reduce their plastic use and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, and then all that went by the wayside during COVID because they had to use all this disposable stuff, so. From what I gather, that's what, I guess, where they, they're going to try to restart that. And all I can do is hope that eventually they'll come around to composting. Have you ever thought, had they, if they're doing that, would they let um, the climate committee come in, individual people, and have bring a set of books for story time? and generate a back and forth question with kids? Just start I don't know. conversations you know, at I mean, third grade level or something? Um, we, you don't know. Yeah, I don't I mean, I was just schools, told, you know, schools I... Schools are coming up with their own agenda and they're overwhelmed. They're getting way too much agenda as this, you know? Yeah, um, I was just told, doing. sure, I mean, Annie McKenzie told me, yeah, you can go to the meeting, but like there's the, the thing called the green team mm -hmm. that mass you know, the state put together it's mm -hmm. a wealth of information for schools that's mm -hmm. what it's for is for schools mm -hmm. i mean she didn't, i ended up saying something about it because the state pushes me to mm -hmm. you know bring this up with schools mm -hmm. try to get your schools involved mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. but um nobody wants to do it y you got in touch with a science teacher at the middle school, remember, a couple yeah, years ago. Yeah, and I, I didn't but, hear back. Now, we did have them paint a dozen signs that I we remember, hung yeah. around yeah, they made the, the community, signs. and then the right. last couple of years, there's been nothing yeah. in the way of school response. So we have to figure response. a way to, to, to generate. That's why I'm saying that like, we have some funding that we can do programs, we can do our work in the library, come and participate, we can do yeah. the, I things. think that's what you can, about all you can do is a banner for the transfer yeah. station and, what you know, whatever kind library. of, you know, make yeah, it a topic. Maybe mm -hmm. some kind of program. Right. I mean, you could stand at the transfer station with a clipboard and a fact sheet with all the available resources and talk to people <coughs> about it and the climate committee could be doing that and that might make as much, that, that's, that's true. a small amount of yes. resources put into that, right. and it's self-educating to the committee. Yeah. And the same thing like with the dike, I don't think people realize the nope. severity of that. Know, For sure, we go door knocking no. <laughs> in a certain neighborhoods and say, I, I think, I don't know what would be said at the door, but what would the 10 salient points, and they tie <coughs> back into the climate resolution, yes. right? 
I'm not even going to say that he's social. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, all so of that, I, I it has to by do him. some good, you know? I mean, <laughs> at some point, it seems like it's going to come to town meeting that the town's going to have to spend some significant money on the dike. And that's when all the explaining is going to happen. Well, I think it, to me, this speaks to, for me, the bigger lesson from, from our loss on this declaration. I think we almost made a rookie mistake, which is we focused all on the paper and not on the campaign. I mean, if we had gotten more people into, into town meeting, yes. oh. you know, yeah. we would be done, right? Yeah. So it was what just was basically like we forgot to get the people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yes, we could, but I mean, I think the, you know, I think the bigger lesson for me is just what we yeah. need to focus on. And so, if if we're talking right. about eventually dealing with the dike, we right. need to start now right. or think creatively about an education series or something right. like that. Right. To right. the dike is not going to be a culture war. No, there, mm, hopefully gonna, not. There are people that are going to be all about. Fixing yeah, I don't think. <laughs> Because yeah. everything depends on it the whole, for everything in quite a few account. people. And can I just say, FEMA and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers are not required to repair or build dikes to climate change um, projections. They are determined to look backwards to historical flooding. So we are not building for the future when we get those kinds of funding. If we wanted to actually build it big enough to withstand the kind of flooding events that are expected to come, you know, then it becomes a climate issue again, and people will just scream and you know whatever. It. What I would suggest is that we build it right the first time when right. we repair it, as opposed to trying to fix it just a little bit to historical standards, and then it's still not good enough to protect us. But it's going to no, be more but she expensive. No, saying we have to do that in order to qualify for funding to actually really fix it. We well, have to do the main. I think it's also important to parse like. Resistance that we encountered. It, that we, it, most of them accept the fact that we have, we're going to continue to have droughts and bad storms. And it's probably related to the climate change. And maybe it's because Mother Goose is charging and it has nothing to do with like, <laughs> carbon being released in the atmosphere. But there's consensus that things are going down. And so while I think people are going to be obsessed or upset about having to use an electric tractor instead of a big John Deere, building a big dike is not going to be something that's going to rile, rile people's political life. It's whatever. just going to be yet more expensive to build it to climate change well, standards yeah, and that's, they... That's the issue, is the money, not, not like the, the political will behind it, I don't think. Yeah. But that's, to me, that's an opportunity, like it's an entry point to be thinking as citizen organizers that here's fear, which is a really motivating factor, we know that. And, you know, she definitely made me afraid. I mean, I've already heard a little bit about that, but, you know, when she started to layer all the things that have been neglected and all the hoops that are going to be super difficult to go through, you know, you, you could see, like, if you had it boiled down to 10 points on a, you know, some kind of sheet on a clipboard, neighbor to neighbor somehow convening a little bit more woken up conversation about it and it does tie into climate you know all over the country people are in big mitigating conversations and it sounds like Hadley's got it totally going on so I mean people could really have you know their children's future and stuff in terms of what they're handing down completely ruined, you know. I mean, it could definitely happen, right? It sounds like. And uh, if everyone's going to be in unity around that, maybe somewhere in the middle of it, it can keep going back to the conversation. If we're spending this money, we should be spending it smart with a future orientation. And maybe it could be a unifying thing. I think, you know, for us, one really big to-do item in my mind is to run an ongoing sort of educational effort, you mm -hmm. know, and yes. have that go on YouTube and have that, yes. you know, collected, whatever. 
So we have it available, and we don't have to like go over it again and again. We can point people to it, you know, so the conversation gets lifted overall, and we just beat it, like create this drum beat for it, right? Mm -hmm. As you're saying, so that people yeah. begin to have more yeah. in-depth conversations. <laughs> it was so interesting with the climate uh, emergency debate. You know, some things that people put out, like I, I think especially some things that Alan said. You know, he's making the case that the frost is coming later so we can pick squash longer. I think you might have been the person to say, that's great, but you don't have any squash. I mean, so... Right, because of the drought. Yeah, because no, of the drought. The yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the year it rained. Last year because we had all that rain. Yeah. Which we're supposed to get... That's going to continue. Yeah. Right. When you get all these deluges and then dry for right. months and months. You know, I think of my brother losing five barns of tobacco last year. That's never happened in like a hundred years of the family growing. It's never happened before. So everybody's saying, oh my goodness, this is going to cost us so much. You're already paying for it one way or the other. Right. It's just spread out. And, and then yeah. Al also said that there were no wood stoves allowed in Northampton. Which is not true. Yeah, well, Kelly, that's I know you... That's not right. Well, well, it's outdoor wood stove. So I, I, I have to, I, that one point, I'm like, I really need to do a little bit more research on that, because like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> so, yeah, it's outdoor, outdoor. It's which sometimes is, which outdoor boiling. Right, anyway. right, because it pollutes <laughs> everywhere, yeah. No, but it's not like, you, you can have a fireplace outside. Right. What I read was that, I didn't even know this kind of thing existed. Outside your house, a wood-burning boiler mm -hmm. to provide heat to yeah. your home. You've seen them around. Yeah. 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 I, I just they didn't... got them in before the rule change. And yeah. Now nobody can have them. The problem is that you can burn all kinds of stuff in there, and you don't have to have like good dry firewood, and you don't. And, and they, they're, you know. Yeah. So that's a high temperature right. burn. They pollute yeah. more. They're inefficient because yeah. all the waste heat. The oily the rags thing. and things like that can get disposed of. They just go up in too thin air. So, but the, the bigger lesson there is that, you know, he heard a snippet of that and then turned it into... Right. Well, but, 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 it, it's, but it's still, how many it's, people it's, took it seriously? You know, but the reality of the, the thing that, that I had to research as well as that one was this about the fact that they're taking farmers' cows away in the Netherlands. That's, that's a actually book. true. Yeah, I know. Uh -huh. and now, what, what is that what, about? what Tony said. And, about the cows and in the other. They are so serious about climate change, I believe it was in the other ones, yeah. that they are telling farmers, and the farmers there are pissed and they're burning their... So they can only have so country. many cows they're, they're phasing, per they're acre. They're phasing down the dairy market yeah. industry nationwide because they've decided that methane is a big problem, and, they need, and that's the the way that they're going to meet their climate protocol. And there's a so-called cheese mountain or milk lake in the European Union, and it's really the easiest place to essentially solve several problems at once. So it's such a big problem. You know, the Dutch are incredibly good at floodplain management yeah. involvement. They're terrible at that piece, right? So they're <laughs> messing with, uh, you know, the, messing up the public engagement with one vocal, but still, you know, they, they think they can dismiss. Theory. No, it was absolutely, I mean, they're not learning from each other, from, from themselves, right? But, but then look at what happened. You had, like, a whole culture war going on in our country that's grabbing that and, and, and but blowing twisting it. Right, right but just because they're doing it there doesn't mean we're going to do it and here. And so oh, it's like, you know, we're in this right. culture war, and Right. How many and times did we hear go... the word mandate mentioned? Recently? Power grab. Did it yeah. remind you of any other like mandates that have been being protested? But you know, I thought it, that listening to when Brian West was speaking, that he said if you want to do something like at that other level, bring us a proposal. It just made me sort of in a bigger way feel like I don't even know the future of the federal government. I don't know the future of the state government. Things are really, really precarious right now. Mm -hmm. And some of this climate conversation, breaking down the walls, should really be happening right at the local level. In a way, even though the resolution went down, it 
was a conversation about it. And it could just be on every yearly timing. I'm not saying that's yeah. the strategy. <laughs> I, not even, I, but I'm just throwing it out there. Like uh, you know, like as a looking yeah. at the map instead of saying, right. oh, right. we won't do it's that. It's calling the attention. I it's like one yeah. piece of it, but the other pieces, like I was saying to Michael, that he, and Wally, and you know, the farmers could actually talk to each other in some way, in small groups, tiptoeing towards some of these issues. Oh, and I you think know, many of sure them Brian are tiptoeing toward it. They are. We yeah. Fight. Yeah. But, so, maybe that's, that's, what, what that's does Wally what and Joe have to say about it? So, Wally is all in. He's, sure he is absolutely convinced right. because it's completely impacting his farm. Yeah. One year we'll be up to our knees in mud, the next year it'll be a dust bowl. It's just so chaotic that it has to be true. So farmers can talk to each other yeah. a little bit well, about it, just in local yeah. terms, like, well, okay. Who were the other farmers that were there? I saw a lot of pickup trucks, but it, it was they were it was Al, mm -hmm. and it was Wes. Were there any other farmers that we know of that were in this group of farmers? Or well, we there were some folks that were behind us, and I don't know. All yeah, them. like the Kellys and stuff, but they didn't speak to it. They're in their sort of farmers. They're I don't think there were any uh, anybody else there. There's besides those two that like make their livelihood from farming. I think we're, we're right. cultural thing. Yeah. Well, we're not going to learn that one. Well, I think we need to think more strategically about you know how to access. Uh, or make linkages to people who are fo totally trusted in the various communities, right? So whether it's like a link to the f to faith communities, a link to the farmers, a link to, I don't know, you know, we well, just have yeah. to think more strategically well, about who it is that we want to and go to them. It Don't was the first church here. they did a, a church reading about um, a book that tied in climate change. It is part of their faith community because it's so significant. Well, Catherine Cahill is a is, is Christian. Uh, right. Evangelical and yeah. others. And also, I do think the statement itself it should be a little more compact. And there were a few lines that certainly really resonated, the things that came up two or three or four times of, like, you know, it's idealist to say you're going to get to zero carbon. There was oh, a, actually oh. a typo in there. It should have been not zero, but net zero, which is the typical language. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, anyway. But again, the good news is we get the community talking. You know, it, the, the, the getting to net zero is not going to happen from Hadley alone, mm -hmm. right? It requires yeah. state action, and that's where most of that, like 90% of that net zero thing is going to happen there. Well, what's interesting is already, I don't know if any of you opened it, but, you know, I get these emails from Bob Dean, Franklin County Energy Committee, and because um, they're, like, super organized around energy stuff. So that net zero stretch code, I mean, that thing's being talked about. It's, you don't, ha you know, it's mm -hmm. if you feel like it right now, but that's coming. I mean, in a few yeah, years... Well, they're going to wire houses for electrical chargers for cars because it just makes sense. Well, at some point, they're going to say, hey, you can't use natural gas anymore. You have to put solar on your house. Like, It's happening in the next yeah. 10 years. Do, do, I'm, I'm kind of new. I, I haven't been in a lot of meetings, and I apologize. I just need to clarify something. The resolution not passing any impact on our, our petition for green communities? No, no, not at all. No, no. no. it's two separate. The only so thing that um, yeah. Molly said is because our tax base is so low relative to other towns, that if the climate emergency declaration had been passed, it may sort of look to the state or the federal government as we are serious about this. Yes, yeah. that's the piece so that that's important. So that was the thing that Molly mentioned. Yeah. Okay, but it, it, it's not... It's not going to stifle our... Nope. No. No. It, it's more important to work with the accountants and get the utility costs right. than so, it is for so that to change. Like, I just but, we did this. We didn't have enough people show up. We would have won if we did. We stimulated we some conversation. Yeah. We learned like that we need to pick issues that are less divisive and, 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 and can bring people... Well, or that are real. 
What or I kept, they're a real fan. That's what I kept fish. hearing yeah. from people <laughs> is, I don't want to say yes to saying yeah. I'm going to do something that somebody in Boston tells me what to do. Bring me something that has to do with that. Like, so that like working on buildings, and diet. that's what we're right. doing. Right. No, I mean, that's what if people there's care. There's going to be strategies for farms. What are those? Right. I mean, I think people do care it. about it. We yes. just didn't but it, have But a it is to important that the state can show, or that, that, that Hadley can show in its applications that it is committed to climate action on a number of fronts, both mitigation and adaptation, for it to be competitive against all the other applications that come But isn't in. doing the MVP assessment and following through with that, doesn't that? Well, work? we just don't ever list it, apparently, you know, because we, we've already not once, or, I mean, I, I get that she's saying, you know, we need gray infrastructure, but that's just, I'm sorry, that's a limitation of the engineer, that they can't come up with, like, some little green, you know, aspect to the application to be able well, to right. get that. Well, right, grasses along the irrigation ditches that prevents well, or erosion. Native, yeah, I mean, getting... rain ditches, whatever. I mean, there's plenty of things. So a typical engineer will has not been trained in climate change, and they don't know those things. So it's a little limitation. So I'm going to talk to her and see okay, what I can help with that a little bit to up those and get more creative. But anyway, I think, we, you know, we need to do better in showing all the things, and green yeah. communities will certainly be one of those well, signs that we're serious and again, the big one, and I'm amazed that it passed, was the plastic bag ban. Mm -hmm. See, that's what I'm saying, is that I think when, when we bring something to Hadley residents that's real, like a real thing, it, it passes. I think our declaration was just too, like, nebulous, not really anything in particular, just saying. And I think that it was, it was asking everyone to commit to this, to to recognize that there is an emergency and to come together, you know, for the common good and work on this. On this and they that said, means. no, we don't want to do that, but we will well, vote on individual things. Specific enough. Yeah. And so we have to take a different tack. Yeah. Yeah, I see. And it was also close. It was yeah. really yeah. close. It was for a handful of voters. Yes, if it would have swung the other way. Friends and told oh, them, yeah. "Better show up to this." Yeah. Exactly. A friend of mine said, "Oh, I thought it was a slam dunk." I'm like, "You know, it yeah. was. It is not. It was not a slam dunk." <laughs> so next time we're just, we will we I plan. We say just, like we have these. Everybody send emails and we prepare like the one you sent. I send it to whoever. Yeah. But we will send it. Two weeks before, and then right. one week before, right. and one yeah. day before, like, yes. please show up, yes. please show up, we yes. need you, we need you. But yeah. I think so it would be good if you bring the resolution again that yeah, some I agree. groundwork's been done to cross some bridges with the people like who said, well, if you have a Hadley proposal, yeah. let's talk yeah. about it, you know, like doing it. And I know you already did. And, and I think that one person's suggestion about shortening it, simplifying it, and just making yeah. it like, one page thing so it doesn't look like anything like the one we did before. <laughs> like, the, like, the, like the plastic band. Remember how we put everything in one one flyer with dots, tap, tap, tap. Five things, like totally clear. Yeah, it yeah. felt like I was up there for a while reading it. <laughs> Whereas. Um, and I, I was, I couldn't get up. I felt so, so paralyzed. Yeah. But no, this is the first. No, we are yeah. not. We That's haven't lost I anything. I know. And I like the idea of like put it again with proposals. Like for instance, the dike. Yeah. This is we need this. Yeah. So we need everybody mm. composed. You know the the, the thing with that though is that you know we had specific policy proposals in there if you remember originally. And they all said, well, you haven't assessed any of these. Take them out, you know. We're not yeah. ready to commit to those actions. So, I mean, ultimately, people just didn't want to commit to any action. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I mean, well, cause it, it, wasn't, it, it just, it, there was, I don't no, think there was any way to win it. Yeah. It didn't have, like, a cost and benefit. Yeah, right. and, right. and we haven't assessed right. it. So, so you know, right. like, this we haven't done the study. You can't say that people wouldn't agree to action if it wasn't. 
we yeah, we, we had no specific, right. you know, you proposal or assessment of, of a, a real plan. And so if we were to get the money to develop a real plan, how do we bring the emissions down? Well, and not just of town buildings, but of the whole population. You know, of equal down. importance to a climate emergency <laughs> declaration is our climate action plan. That's something where it can be concrete. Yes. What are we going to do? But that's and not something that you know the seven or eight of us are going to put together. That would be ha that would no, you have to be a really a comprehensive our assessment. Our public posture right now, immediately after this meeting, really ought to be: we are working on this dike thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we want to get. To we're back to the buildings and back to concrete and, things. And yeah. yeah. But I would leave with the dike because that is going to bring everybody together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's yeah. important. I mean, we could be Kentucky in any time. Yeah. Yeah, it's just nice and the like, bikes. Missouri. That was, that's ridiculous <laughs> that didn't pass. I'm sorry. Seven thousand dollars. We're talking about millions here. Yeah, the bikes. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I have not gone and done my homework on that. Yeah, just. just well, just this was a tight turnaround to this meeting, and really grateful that everybody could make this day because Carolyn could make it and. I know you could make it here, but I think that it's kind of uh, dikes and bikes. <laughs> that's, a new, that's a new mantra here. And electric bills. And compost. Thank you. Well, and it's it's just great with the neighbors who drop off their compost at my pile. And I wish know. there was some way to do a survey in town. That's just what find I want. out yeah. how yeah. many people so are many composting. People are doing compost. I mean, yes. what's your guess? Raise your hand. How many people do compost? Cows? I do compost. I don't compost. I give it to my chickens. Actually, yeah. Well, whatever. Yeah, works. That's right. But so, but that's that's like compost. if we can have a, a survey, maybe in Facebook that I love hardly whatever that that. So like uh, we have a survey, how many? Well, maybe ask Carolyn. Like when the sewer bills go out or the water bills go out, insert a, the insert, survey asking, yes, "Do please. you compost? Do, yes. you know, are you interested in composting? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Did you know we offer thank it at you. the transfer station? Right. USA offers it, yeah. and we have compost bins for right. twenty-five bucks. And the knowledge that compost that the waste, uh, food uh, waste is 80% more dangerous than drive the cars. You know, yeah, like we are saying not, like... You can't say that. No? No. <laughs> it's just it's not how accurate. how you drive the car versus how much food you produce. Right, right, right. It is, methane is very powerful. It also lasts a much shorter time than carbon in the atmosphere. It lost by 30 to 40 years as opposed to 100 or 200 or whatever it is. So it, it is way worse in the short term. Right. But to equate it with um, fossil fuel, fossil fuel yeah. burning and, and the other things that we need to do, we need to do all these things. Yeah. It's well, not, I, and it's, it's not a magic bullet. It ain't gonna, it ain't gonna do it. I, I feel like if you if you can get people to realize instead of putting it in this bin, put it in this bin, and guess what? It won't cost you as much. Yes. You, you know, like. Yes. Well, it's like the mattresses now, where all of a sudden people are saying, "Whoa, wait." Mattresses, how do I have to handle it now? It, all of a sudden, there's a whole yes. bunch of talk about processing textiles and other things right. that we've talked about. Um, you know, things are changing. Yeah, but for, for people, I mean, I haven't put anything, I did an announcement about the textiles, but I, it's so confusing because that I keep getting these things from Mass DEP about mattresses, 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 but it's really talking to recycling coordinators of towns that, that are involved with their transfer station. It's, it's the haulers and it's Patrick Kennedy that needs to care about what to do. Regular people just do the same thing with their mattresses they always have. Yeah. You take it to the transfer station, mm -hmm. now instead of him just dumping it in bulky waste, he's going to take it to UTEC or somebody where it's going to be recycled. Or if you take it to Valley Recycling, they're going to charge you more now, but they're going to take it to a recycler. It's if, in handy, we were already paying an extra for mattresses. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, yeah. And well, this why Mother's Club and all that in the springtime when we do that. Right. So right. it's Thank it doesn't really change. I may contact you to give me because I want a phrase that is impactful but truth. About compost. About compost. Yes. For me, it's I, I sent you the report. I mean, you, you send, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
But you know, like I'm taking something that I read that Jack gave me, but then make dirt. Not it's it's not just that the comparison has no scale. You know, like right. if you were to. And the, the unit is missing, basically, the, the unit of comparison right. for this, you know? Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, composting anyway. needs to be part of a zero waste mentality anyway. Right. It's not just composting, it's reducing of course. Waste our, our of trash. Yes. Reducing what we consume, right? Exactly. And this, right. Yeah. You reduce, know, there's a really reduce. great toolkit on. Uh, on all kinds of recycling, waste, compost, whatever, that um, I was involved in the release of it in New Hampshire uh, a year ago. I can send you the link. Yes. It has, like, such incredible stories yeah. and resources and whatever. So that would I can, be really valuable. I can send that to you. I'm going to shut this down.